Hi everyone, today I'm going to be walking you through the new card visual that was released with June 2023 Power BI Desktop. This visual is honestly pretty awesome and in a single visual you can have multiple different elements. Now you, you used to be able to do something like this with the multi-row card but because of the immense amount of formatting options that we've been given with this new visual we can achieve a lot of these different looks where we can have icons, we can have line charts embedded directly within the visual and we can have a lot of formatting options that is completely cust uh, customizable and interactive. So I'm going to walk you through how to achieve these looks and let's get started. So the only thing that you need in order to use this visual is to download the latest June 23 Power BI desktop client. So in the description, you're going to find this simply just download it and that's it. You just need to make sure that the version that you're downloading is at least the one from June 23. Otherwise, you won't have it. Once you have the new client, what you need to do is nothing because usually what you would have to do is go to options and turn on preview features. But this is one of the first items that was released with the preview feature for new card visual turned on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sample data sets that I always use, which is simply the finance financial data. So skipping ahead a couple seconds. So now I've loaded the financial data and I've created three new measures. I've created the sum of profit, the sum of sales, and the sum of units sold. Pretty straightforward. Now let's try putting these into a visual. Once you throw it in drag and drop, it usually just takes you to the card visual. You just got to open up the visual types and it'll be this one right here, the one that says card new and you select it. And now you'll have the opportunity to put in more items. So you can click on the add data and select other fields. Let's select profit and let's select unit sold. So that's what it looks like. And you are now able to see that we have multiple cards essentially within one visual itself. Let's change a couple things. First, let's uh, take away the suffix or I mean the prefix of the measures. And now we have a proper label and the actual values. This is pretty cool. So let's dive right into the actual formatting options, which is what you can do. If we go to the title, yes, you could have a title for the total visuals where you can have the title itself and you could have a subtitle turned on and it's pretty nice. It works pretty great. But most of the time, I think you won't really need this so much because the cards themselves are pretty evident what they need. I don't I really don't think you need to use the title or the subtitle. What's more interesting is when you get to the shape with the shape, you can have the rectangle, the rounded rectangle and then a snipped tab. So a snip tab you can see is cut at the very top and the rounded rectangle is kind of circular and you can change how rounded you want the circles to be by switching around this um, parameter, but you can also click customize style. So once you, you open this up, you'll be able to select which corners you want to be rounded. I think this is really nice because you can, uh, you know, it's like get different looks like this, for example, where it's like a little bit more like a leaf, if you will, or you might just want to go with one corner itself. If you don't want it to be rounded, you can also open up the customize style here where you can, of course, with the existing parameters, change how big the top and the bottom snips are to make a polygon, if you will, but you can also click on customize style so that specific corners are being folded. One thing that I did find is that if you have the top left corner folded and you try to fold the top right corner, it works. But if you just try to do the top right corner, it actually doesn't fold until you fold the left corner. So, so that's a bug that I saw. The next formatting option is the callout. So the callout here applies to the text that you see inside. So right now I'm going to change from 45 to size 20. And there what it's doing is it's making the visuals themselves a little bit more manageable. I don't want the numbers to be, you know, it's like size 45. I don't even understand why that's the default setting perfectly honest but you can do a lot of things like you can you know it's like make them bold change the font colors and you can do some cool things where you can make the numbers themselves a little bit transparent you can make the alignment uh, mid or to the right you can accept text wrap and also one thing that i think is pretty cool is that you can have display units but also have 
custom display units. This is really interesting because this is essentially the same functionality as dynamic format strings. So if I wanted to do something like, which I think is still pretty cool, there's a, a position here in order for you to put in the format string that you'd like to see. And of course, uh, an option is to if the value is blank, you can have a default blank value here. Really, really strong amounts of formatting already with just the values. And we're going to move on with the label. The label here is the value that you can put for the item that says sales, profit, or unit sold. So this can actually be changed individually if you want sales and profit and unit sold to be something else, you can absolutely do that. If you want to have a context, you can do that. You can have it above or below the value pretty pretty nice and you can also do something like spacing what what's the distance between the two different text items pretty nice stuff one of the things i think is really great is you can select series where it says apply series to and then for sales i can set the values or something directly myself uh, so you can see that for sales i can change the color for example and for individual measures you can set the formatting as you like which is pretty cool then let's go to the layout. Uh, the layout here defines how the cards are positioned. So if I click horizontal, you can see it's you know a horizontal layout. But if I click vertical, for example, you can see that you can have the cards like going top to bottom instead of side to side. You can also select the grid. So that gives you a couple of parameters. But let's say I had two and two. And now you have a grid section where it's a two by two within the visual itself. And it, even if I don't have necessarily four cards to fill the space, it will still do its best to try to fill the space. I think this is really neat. If I put in three by two, you can see how like, the space is taking it up. And it, it's a really nice way to just uh, have full control over how you want the cards to be looking like. Let's go back to horizontal. And now for the really, really juicy stuff. The cards here, this option is probably the most uh, significant, I, in my opinion. So the padding here one is usually set at normal, but if you set wide, you can see that there is probably a little bit of space from the edge of the card to what's inside. So if you set it wide, it goes a little bit more towards the center. If you set it narrow, it goes a little bit more towards the edge. And if you set it to custom, you can see what the padding looks like. So let, let me just put this here for two, like 20, for example. And you can see that the padding, which is the, di uh, the distance between the card and the text is a specific amount of, you know, it's like pixels. I think this is really cool that you can like very easily select how it wants, to, how you want it to be done. And now let's go into these items here. These are the really important ones where the power comes in. So with fill, you can set a specific color of the actual background, but you can also set the color to be transparent. Now this is important because for example, let's say I have gray or I have a gray background and I want to put in an actual image. I can do this. I can select an image that I've created and I can make this into a background. This is really nice, but you might be able to see that just on the edges here, there's like a gray area. Now, if you want that to disappear, you simply set the transparency all the way to 100 and now no more gray area. Of course, uh, you can see there's still a border and I can just turn that border off. And now I have something that kind of looks like a very customized card already. Let's go through all of the other settings before I change change things around. You can uh, obviously you can turn on the border and the border can become thicker or a different color, which is pretty cool. I'm going to turn this border off for now, and you can see, also see that there is a shadow. So the shadow doesn't work unless you have the border, which is um, a little strange to me. But let's say the border it goes back to one. Now with the shadow, you can select either outside or inside, and you can see that there's a small shadow inside or a small shadow outside. And uh, it can be from a specific direction. I think that's pretty cool. It, it It's okay. It's not something that, you know, it's like, I, feel like, I think it's too, you know, it's like important, but if you're trying to add depth, you can absolutely do it this way. 
can turn on something called glow and glow is like where when you have a shadow inside and outside so it's kind of like a neon effect this is pretty cool if you're trying to do something like glass morphism but i'm not going to be showcasing that here uh, you've got the accent bar and with an accent bar it's pretty nice because you can you know it's like set a specific accent you can set the color to be like whatever you'd like it to be let's like set the transparency once again pretty cool stuff you can you know it's like set it to the top or whichever direction you'd like it to be and i think this adds a nice aesthetic to the cards itself in my opinion the fact that the formatting includes an image is probably the strongest part of these cards this is how you can add icons this is how you can add different charts to these cards and i'm going to show you how there's two different ways that you can put in the images you can have a flat image file so i could uh, choose to have a specific image and or i could have an image url so an image url is going to be just text that i can you know it's like input and an image itself is going to be a flat file if you select an image you can see that you know it's like this this is too big uh, for the actual card itself so the image can be a fit or a fill and if it's a fill it works a lot better it fits uh you know it's like filled into the size you can set the transparency you can set the position left right bottom or top a nice little piece of ui let's put it to the left all right you can also change the size directly so there is something here where it says 50 and now i'm changing that pixel size to 150 and i think you can you know basically whatever you'd like with it it's really intuitive you know it's like try it out so if you select a specific series you can take the image and change it to be something else uh, let's go to unit sold and let's change that to this one and then i'm going to select all again and i'm going to make all of the sizes bigger let's copy and paste that and i'm going to remove the accent bar i'm going to go back to the uh, remove the border go back to the fill and i'm going to turn on the background image again i'm going to make this fit and i'm going to go back to the labels and make the colors white. And there you have it. A pretty important question is how did I make this background? So the way that I'm doing is to use PowerPoint. What I'm going to do is I made a shape and I put a gradient on the shape. You can see how I did this in this other video of how I use PowerPoint to make Power BI backgrounds. And I simply select the item and I right click and save as picture. This will allow me to save it as a PNG or an SVG or something like that. And once it's saved as an image, I can you know, like directly use that image in the background here. And now we're going to go to the final part of the video where I'm going to show you how you can make spark lines in your charts using SVGs. I'm simply going to be using Carrie Colosco's um, templates that she has on her website. I'm going to link this in the description. You've got to check this out. You go to templates, uh, hit SVG templates, and look for the item that says spark lines. This is exactly the item that I'm going to use. I'm going to simply copy this code and we're going to repurpose it to be used in these new card visuals. So let's go back here. And I'm going to copy this, paste it to here, and we're going to create a new measure. The new measure is going to be for sales. So I'm going to call this sum uh, of, we'll just call this sales sparkline. And you're going to be able to see that there is an X axis, which is already defined as the date column in the financials table. And we're going to use the, instead of the sum of gross sales, and we're going to use the sum of sales. And that's almost everything. Right now, this, uh, you know, it's like because this code was used for matrices, you actually have to remove one condition to simply if has one value. That doesn't need to be for us. We're going to remove this, hit enter. And then we're going to change the data category into image URL. Once we do this, we can select the card visual once again. 
select cards. Right now I have the sales series selected. I'm going to go to image, remove the image that currently exists and set the image type to image URL. I'm going to make the image URL a, one, a function and just look up sparkline. And there you have it. Right now, the position's on the left. Let's put it on the bottom and let's change the size to be 250. Maybe that was too big. How about 200? All right, so 200 here. I'm just gonna show you a little bit what you can do to alter a little bit of the um, conditions here. Right now, the sales sparkline, the one that I copied, is the flat color. If you want to have the gradient, you just scroll a little bit further down and you can see that there is a gradient sparkline as well. So let's try making this one into a gradient once again. So now change this and remove the condition. And if we do this, it's still the image URL. Now you'll see there's a gradient. There are certain things that I also think you can still fix. For example, there's a line at the very end, which if you don't want to see, all you need to do is you need to make sure that this item here, the view box, is just turned down by one pixel. And now there's no edge line. If you want the actual line itself to be a little bit thinner, you can set the, um, the stroke width here to be one, for example. And it, this is just, you know, it's like HTML code to be used to create um, an image. And you can modify, you know, it's like this to be essentially however you want it to be. Let's take the sales sparkline and do it for the profit and for the unit sold. So the final thing I'm going to show you is how to make this uh, to look like this final bottom row here. And the way that we're going to do that is we are going to turn off not only everything else, we're going to turn off the accent bar and the border, and we're going to go to the card fill. We're going to select the background image for the picture that we have. Uh, okay, so I did this for units sold but I need to do this for all series. So I'm going to select the background image to be this. I'm going to set the value to be uh, not fill, but fit so that everything is enclosed within this area. I'm going to make sure that the callout values are white. And the last thing that I need to do is to make sure that in the actual code itself that you see here for the spark lines, Everything that is navy, I'm going to make to white. Let's do this everywhere. And what this does has made everything white. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching if you've stayed with me this far. And I hope, I hope you learned something. Take care. Goodbye.